No, this is Catholic Dad. Um, episode number 21. Are electric cars more efficient than um, internal combustion engine cars? Um, I don't know that. Actually, I do somewhat know that. So um, you have internal combustion engine cars and you have uh, like battery powered cars, electric cars. Uh, which one's heavier? Does anybody know that? Um, and this isn't even up for debate. Everybody knows the answer if you actually read uh, for two seconds. Uh, battery powered cars are significantly heavier than internal combustion engine cars, upwards of a thousand pounds. So let's just say you have a um, internal combustion engine car that weighs 4,000 pounds and you have a battery powered car that weighs 5,000 pounds. How much more energy will it take to move the battery powered car? It's going to take 25% more energy. Um, uh, assuming um, uh, equality and uh, friction efficiency and everything else, because force equals mass times acceleration. Force is directly uh, related to uh, mass, and therefore it takes 25% more energy to power an electric car than it does an internal combustion engine car. Uh, that's just from the very beginning. Now, here's the other thing is how do you get all the rare earth metals, the cobalt, tungsten, uh, beryllium and whatever else they use in all, all these uh, battery technologies, where did those elements come from? Those elements come from the earth. They're called rare earth elements and it takes these massive pits of mine that uh, people are mining from the earth uh, continuously. And um, I've seen um, on an average a battery powered car like um, uh, a Varus or something like, like a smaller car um, that it's, that car rolls off rolls off the production line with 80,000 miles on it with regards to an internal combustion engine car because the amount of earth moving machinery that people need to actually mine those rare earth elements to then put in an electric car. And so that should make you think, wow, that car already has 80,000 miles on it. Now, what about a high performance car with very large battery packs like a Tesla or something like that? It's probably 100,000 plus miles already on the car as it hits the road. Now, you'll make arguments that, um, <clears throat> well, they, they, then they burn electric energy or they work, work on electric energy, not, not fossil fuels. So that's beneficial. Well, where does electricity come from? There are some, um, uh, there's some electricity that's uh, produced through solar, wind, hydroelectric, but the bulk of it, particularly in America in the Midwest, is produced through fossil fuels. And now what an incredibly inefficient process that is. Uh, to make uh, electric, or, um, energy out of fossil fuels, you have to burn them. When you burn them, you break the carbon bonds. And then the carbon bonds have to go uh, trans, or then, uh, then you break the carbon bonds and you heat water and you spin a turbine. And then after that, you spin a generator with uh, and a magnet and an electric wheel. Then it makes electricity, then it has to be stored and that's uh, massively inefficient versus just putting the hydrocarbons uh, within an internal combustion engine vehicle. That's a far more efficient system. The other thing is this, uh, these, uh, these battery powered cars are tremendously heavy. Now, what if uh, the federal government decided, let's just um, decrease the regulation on the internal combustion engine cars. By the way, we can make a little four cylinder diesel motor. We can, uh, we can make them weigh 1,800, we can let them weigh 1,800 pounds again, like the old Honda CRXs of the 1980s. Uh, they, they got 50 plus, if not 60 miles to the gallon, and they lasted two to 300,000 miles. Uh, those cars, if you actually, if the federal government allowed it, would be incredibly more efficient than electric vehicles, period. Uh, there, there's actually no dispute on that because they, they would then be uh, over less than half the weight, uh, way less than half the weight, maybe a third of the weight of an electric vehicle. A third of the weight has to use a third of the electric power, or a third of the power. And um, there's no way anybody can claim that electric uh, power would be more efficient um, if freedom and deregulation was allowed to come to the motor vehicle market. And so, and I'm not saying that uh, there's no role for electric, electric cars in the future. I think, honestly, if they allowed the marketplace to dictate electric cars, we would actually have probably, um, you know, little electric cars, 1,500 pounds, uh, electric cars that literally had a 20 mile. Um, uh, ranges, you know, for the average commuter in a small town. And those would take off like crazy because they're easy to service, uh, they make a lot of sense, you can plug them in, uh, you don't have these massive battery packs that, you know, the, where, where you have to go, they, they want a range of like three to 400 miles. Just plug them in at night, take them 20 miles to work, plug them in at work, to take them home, or whatever else, you know. So, um, yeah, no, there's a role for electric vehicles, but the way the, the federal government with its massive $7,500 per car subsidy is, um, pushing this, it makes no sense to me. And so I, uh, I hope for diesel motors uh, to, to make a comeback, Volkswagen, hopefully they can get through all the, uh, the emission technology and make another 60 mile per gallon diesel uh, motor with 
great performance and longevity. And so, well, anyway, uh, just something to think about. Are electric motors more efficient than internal combustion engine motors? Uh, under no uh, situation could they be because electric cars weigh a heck of a lot more. And so, there, therefore, this is Catholic Dad signing off. Um, if you like this, uh, please subscribe uh, to my video or like or comment or whatever else you want to do and share with your friends. And uh, please pray the rosary and get the Mass um, and confession. Thank you. Have a nice night.